So you want to break into cybersecurity, but you have no experience. And every time you go online, you look for a job, everybody wants two to five years of experience. And then you ask yourself, how do I get experience if nobody will hire me? I'm there. I'm with you. I get it. What if I told you you could build something at home that will give you experience, give your certifications more teeth, and get you better prepared for a career in IT and cybersecurity? And you might say, Chris, you're full of shit. And you know what? I'm here to defend myself because in this video, we're going to build a simple home lab to use as projects you can put on your resume. Hey, I'm Chris Kambaya, Cyber Pro. I've been in the field for over 15 years in IT and cybersecurity. And I'm here to pretty much teach you what I've learned over the years to get you better prepared for a career in cybersecurity. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on these videos. So. First, what are we gonna need? Here we have a simple diagram of what we wanna work on. This is our simple cyber lab. So we're gonna install four different virtual machines, a Windows Server machine, a Windows Workstation, Ubuntu Server, and Kali Linux. So I wanna be using one of my old laptops. I think it's about five years old, has 64 gigs of RAM, a terabyte of storage, and an Intel i7. Now, to have a smooth ride, you only need about 32 gigs of RAM, um, you know, storage, at least have 500 gigs of storage. I recommend you get an external hard drive for this. If not, you know, just use what you got and at least a six to nine core um, CPU. So first let's go get our ISOs. So first you need to go to Microsoft Evaluation Center and get the Windows 11 Enterprise and the Windows Server 25. They're gonna ask you for some, some information when you go to download, you know, just fill out this information and you'll get your copy. So both for Windows 11 and for the Windows Server. You go to Ubuntu and they're gonna download the 24.04.2, the Ubuntu Server, and then you'll go to Kali and we'll install the recommended installer for Kali Linux. I'm gonna provide the links to this in the, in the description, so don't worry about that. And next, we're gonna download VirtualBox. You can, you can definitely use Hypervisor, but I feel that VirtualBox is just a little bit more user-friendly. So once everything is downloaded, you want to install VirtualBox first. And once VirtualBox is installed, this is what you should get. So this is the home screen for VirtualBox. And as you can see, I have already installed the virtual machines. It's very simple. All you're going to do is hit new and you'll name your machine. You'll choose where you want to save the VM. I'm going to put it in my D drive and then you're going to select the ISO. So here I have my different ISOs. I'll create another Windows machine. And as you can see, it automatically identifies the OS. We're going to check this skip unattended install. We're going to go to hardware. This one has four gigs of RAM and two C CPUs. I'm sorry, two core CPU, and that's more than enough. And then for hard drive, we're going to change this to 40. We don't need that many gigs in the hard drive just yet. We hit finish. Now, this is going to be connected to our internal network. And to do that, we're going to go to settings. We're going to go to network and we're going to change adapter one to internal network and you can name it if you want and we're going to change promiscuous mode to allow all and we hit okay and from here we start up the machine and go through the process of installing each os this part is going to take very long don't you know get stressed out like why does this take this long it's going to take a long time so we're going to fast forward and then we'll jump on one of our first machines so while we wait for our systems to boot up i'm going to have to do my shameless plug here if you're looking to get some more information on how to break into cybersecurity, I recommend you check out my book, The Cybersecurity Field Guide. I wrote this with you guys in mind who are trying to break into the field and have a lot of questions. So it's actually written for beginners and it gives you pretty much all the tools and advice you need to get into this field. All right, enough of that, let's get back to work. All right, sir, our Windows server has finished installing. Now, just be careful while you're going through the install process, you choose the desktop experience version because if you choose the first one that doesn't say that, then you're only going to have a PowerShell a CLI version and you don't want that. You want to add desktop version. So first we're going to add our static IP and it's really simple. You're going to go to network connections. You can go to the adapter. You're going to right click hit properties. You're going to go to IPv4 properties again, and then you're going to use the following IP address and then you add the um, a static IP you want to use. And this example um, is a 192.168.1.10, all right? And this is the same process for the Windows workstation. So we don't have to go over that one. Let's jump over to Kali Linux. All right, so this is Kali Linux. 
we want to make sure it's on the same network as everything else. So we're going to come over here to this Ethernet symbol. We're going to right click. You're going to go to Edit Connections. You're going to click on Wire Connection 1. Hit the Setting Symbol. We're going to go to IPv4. So usually when you first come in here, it's going to be on Automatic. And you're going to put it on Manual. Once it's on Manual, you're going to put in the static IP you want. And this is a slash 24. And then you'll hit Save. All right, so since we already did our Windows machines, I'm gonna go ahead and ping them. So let's go ahead and ping 192.168, whoops, 8.1.11, that works, 10, that works. All right, so that's a good sign. So now let's go ahead and add a static IP to our Ubuntu server. All right, here's Ubuntu. So we don't have a regular user desktop on here, so it's gonna be CLI. So we need to find the configuration file for the network. So what you're going to do, we're going to go to um, CD slash ETC net plant, and then we hit LS. So here, these are the different configuration files. One is the actual file and the other is the backup. And then we're going to go ahead and change the configuration. So you're going to hit sudo nano and then the location of set configuration file. And here it is. And so this is a, a private network um, is what it needs to look like. So we're going to add render network, Ethernet, and you got to, this thing is very finicky. So you got to make sure the format is pretty much close to this or exactly like this. And then we're going to give it a static IP. So DHCP four false address, and this is going to be a dot 12. So once you've made any changes, you're going to hit control X and then you'll hit yes. And then it'll take you back to where you started. I almost forgot once you've change the configuration file you're gonna hit sudo net plan apply your password and now it should be good to go so from here i'm gonna go ahead and ping my other devices 192.168.1.10 can hit that and let's go try 11 get that too let's try to hit the cali machine and I can hit everything. All right, let's make sure we ping from our Windows machine. 192.8.1.12. Yep. And make sure we can hit Kali. We can do that. So real quick, you might run into an issue where you're not able to ping your Windows devices. And it's going to be a firewall issue. So to make sure, go ahead and let's type in firewall.cpl. And then we're going to go to advanced settings. And you're going to go to inbound rules. So I have already created it right here, but what you're going to do, you're going to go to new rule and we're going to go to custom next, next, the protocol type is going to be ICP and V4 and next. And here you can choose if you want an IP, a certain IP range or any, you know, specific IPs or any IP. And then you would hit next, allow the connection, domain, private, public, and then you would give it a name. And once you give it a name, you'll be able to see it over here. And once that's configured on both your Windows server and your Windows uh, PC, you'll be able to ping them with no issue. All right. All right. So now we have a working cybersecurity lab. We have a Windows server, a Windows workstation, an Ubuntu server, and Kali Linux. Now, this is just the baseline. We're just getting started. But jump on that Kali, Kali machine and play around with it. And, you know, so you can get to know where everything's at. And if this video helped you out, make sure to hit subscribe, hit that notification bell. I got a lot more videos coming out soon. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.